Well, the title of this, I, I really believe it. <laughs> and only because I went through it so many times. Uh, I always wanted to start a business. I mean, God, I'm, what am I, 79 years old. And, you know, back in the 70s or whatever, I even went to get an MBA. I thought that's what I needed to start a business. I started businesses, I got an MBA in computers, and I even started a computer company back in the 70s, and they all failed. Everything, my first three businesses failed. Yeah, <laughs> and that's because I had an MBA, I feel. <laughs> and I believed in the literature. And everybody who encourages you to start a business is someone who has something to sell you that you think you need to start a business. You don't know what you need because you don't know what you're selling to who and stuff like that. Uh, so taking advice isn't bad, but it's usually bad. <laughs> and there's usually other ways. Now, if you have a lot of money, it doesn't matter. If you have a lot of money to blow and the things they say aren't going to work anyway, then that's fine. But if you're trying to start a business and you have no money, then, you know, at least what happened to me, looking for money was a waste of time. Because then I would start something and I would fail. Then I have to start again and fail. And so it, you know, when I failed these businesses, in these businesses, I felt, who won? You know, the person I bought the programs from, the person I, I paid to design my business cards or my website, didn't have websites at the time, my office space, my marketing, all that, all that stuff failed. And that's why after three times failing, man, I said, boy, and I didn't have fun. And I had an MBA, too. And it was painful every step of the way because it was failure after failure after failure. <laughs> and, uh, and then going in debt and getting another job I had to dig myself out of life and, and start again. So the third time I said, geez, I didn't even have fun. I had no fun doing these businesses because I failed and then had that burden of debt and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, the feeling that I was walking around the street with a big F on my forehead because I'd failed and everybody would make fun of me. Well, the biggest, nicest realization I had with all that is that nobody cares if you fail. <laughs> and that's liberating. So go out and fail and do what you think you have to do and fail. And, and then you'll be liberated because you see you didn't have fun. Nobody cared if you failed, and you still don't have a business, and you're not having fun in life. Wow. So what I did the third time was reverse that. Hey, I'm going to have fun first and learn how to start a business without any money. And, and I think that's even true now, more true now, that you could start a business without any money uh, because you don't need money to start a business. You, don't, you know, if you wanted to sell something 30, 40 years ago, you have a store. A store. Now you don't. Now for $5, you got an Etsy store. And now you can sell something there. You're gonna make it yourself or you're gonna get it from other people and you don't buy it. You, you just give them money if you sell it. Yeah. And the same thing for advertising. You know, you don't buy advertising, you give the advertiser money if you sell something, if they're so positive that you're going to make a fortune by buying their advertising, well then say, okay, if they sell you how much you buy they have, just say a million dollars. I'll give you a million dollars, but I'll share it in the profits. I'll give you half the money that you sell from your dynamite marketing or whatever you have to sell something. And we'll both make a half a million dollars. How's that? Yeah. And if they're not willing to do that, you're, you're probably wasting your money. Nine, nine times out of 100 you are, because they don't know. They can't promise you're going to sell it. You don't know, so nobody knows. So the only way to know is by testing. And the only way to testing is without losing money is by joint ventures. And that's what happened to me on TV. You saw me so, in, on TV so much in the 90s because I was getting wise by then that I never bought any of that time until I was certain I knew for sure. But I mean, most of the money just sharing time. I mean. I had commercials that were running on CNN all the time, and CNN would run my commercials if they had free time. If nobody paid the money, I said, here's a commercial. I'll give you half the money that sells if nobody else buys it, and that's fine. They made money off of me, you know, <laughs> because it worked for me, and I found out it worked for me, 
and I give them half the money. If I had my books in a store, I'd have to give them half the money, right? So why shouldn't I give somebody else half the money? See, if everybody's so positive that they could make, that you'll make money by advertising with them, well, you don't know, and they really don't know. So, so you say, hey, I'll give you half the money. Give them all the money. It doesn't matter. If it doesn't cost you anything, give them all the money. I'll give you all the money. Put my ad on your website or whatever, and let's see if it works. If you're so positive it works, and you think this is a great opportunity for me to make money, I'll give, all, I'll give you all the money, and you see if it works. That way you don't spend a nickel. You don't waste money. You can't waste money. Because the name of the game of being in business is not wasting money. Because you're out of business when you run out of money. And you can't run out of money before you figure out who your customers are and how they buy and why they buy. And that, that's a moving target. I keep learning that every uh, year of my life. It changes, it changes, it changes. So you have to figure that out. And if you're going to throw money at figuring it out, you have to have a lot of money before you figure it out. So the trick is don't pay anything to figure it out. And there's ways to do it. Sure, it's not easy. It's easier to spend money and it's easier to lose money. So if you have money to lose, then that's fine. <laughs> you don't care. You know? If you don't have money to lose, then it's dumb. You know, it's not practical. You're not gonna stay in business. Your chances are so diminished, it's incredible. So you have to figure out a ways around that. And, and now with social media, man, there's so many ways to get free marketing. And that's the way you learn, you get free marketing. Even if one person, only one person is watching, that's fine. You grow, that's how you grow. You don't go out and play the Super Bowl as soon as you learn how to play football. No, you play in the minor leagues. You, you go where there's nobody. I mean, that, 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 that's what growth is all about. Growth is not about hitting home runs. Growth is about standing up at the plate and you know, you know, striking out a hundred times before you even hit a goddamn ball. But we think we know. Eh, nobody knows. Even the experts will tell you they think they know, but they really don't know because we're all different. Everything you do is going to be different. Everything you have is different than anybody else. So you have to find out what's good for your way. And your way is the only way that's going to work for the longest time possible. Uh, grabbing on somebody else's coattails is not a sustainable thing. <laughs> and it's not a good feeling, at least to me. But we all have to struggle through this life ourselves, yeah. And there's no magic answers. Uh, and that's why, to me, what Lesco Help does is help you find alternatives. So at lescohelp.com, what we show you is options to do things, to get things done, to get money or whatever, besides what's normal. You're going to go to Google and just find out all the normal ways to do things. Now, if you have a lot of money, that's fine. And then the problem is when you're using Google and you learn it takes money, they're telling you it takes a lot of money to do things, then you're not learning the alternative ways to do things. And everybody's got alternative ways. And usually the biggest successes in this country has started with zero, absolutely nothing, you know, uh, and figured it out along the way, you know and worked at getting a customer, that's all. And, and that's why most of us get tied up in, whether I be an LLC, who the hell cares? You know, your customer's not gonna ask you if you're an LLC, if they want your product. No, you're trying to protect yourself from LLC. That's another reason. Yeah, what do you have? You don't have shit, so why, why protect nothing? Whether they could come and steal your kids or something? I don't know. You know, it, it's just silly. You could worry about everything and, and not worry about the things that are critical. That's why you have, to me, in doing things, there's a thousand things to worry about, and that's why if you go on the internet, you'll get a thousand and one or ten thousand things you should worry about. But no, don't worry about those. The only thing you have to worry about if you want to start a business is getting a customer. Anybody else that tells you anything else is stupid because if you don't have a customer, you don't have a business. So you have an LLC, so you have the fancy this, so you have a great web page, so you have all this kind of stuff. Everybody says it's like, so you impress your friends. Your friends don't care. They don't buy your stuff. If they buy your stuff, then listen to them. If they don't buy your stuff, don't listen to them. They're not your customer. <laughs> Go to where the customers are, yeah, and see what they want to see. Find out what they want to hear. You know, not with friends and family. They don't, 
you know, and you're not helping them. You got to find out how to help your customers, and so that you have to understand their mind, not your mind, not your friends' minds, not your family minds, uh, but what's in the mind of your customer, because they're the ones you're trying to solve, and you have to what, know what's in their heart, not even what they say. You have to know what they're feeling. And that's how you talk to customers, yeah. You know? Because you get inside. Uh, to me, one of my favorite sayings, uh, you know, a good lover doesn't have to be told what to do because we don't have good enough language. You have to understand it through your heart. So you go to a meeting of customers, not a meeting of people like you. I mean, all we have, you know, like the Toy Manufacturers Association. Sure, you could learn something from them, but no. You want to know, <laughs> you want to go to an uh, association of people who buy toys for kids, not people who are like you. You know your, their problems because you have them too. You want to understand the problems of your customer and what they are. So you intuitively learn what they are and how to deal with them and trial and error. And everything is a trial and error. You have to try a hundred things to get through to find the right thing. So that's why the more money you spend on it, the less you could try more things. So that's why, the, to me, the key is you do things by not spending money on it. There's too many ways to try things. And I have a report that says if you're a member of Let's Go Help, I'll send you, it's, it's a report I call How to Retire in Three Years, which is really a bullshit title, but <laughs> it gets the point across. Because you, you, once you find something you want to do in life for the rest of the time, you're retired. I've been, re, I've retired 40, 50 years ago. The more I'm retired, the more money I make. <laughs> it's crazy. It's up and down, of course. Yeah. Uh, but, or other ways to get money, to get help. You could get help thinking through things. Don't go looking for money. Go looking for help to help people think through your idea. So you see other things you, you don't know enough. We all don't know enough because we don't know our customers and what they want. So there's a lot of free consultants that the government gives grants to to help you think that through so you don't go out there spending money and wasting it on stuff you don't need. Okay, now it's getting Thanksgiving. I'm going to go away tomorrow. Go to see a son of mine who's sort of off the grid kind of guy. He's an IT guy, but really building a, a life for him son, out in 20 acres, uh, backed up to a national park, having a ball, doing what he really wants to do in life. He's not a millionaire man, but he lives every day how he wants to live. Now, that is a wonderful life to me. If he has to make money, he makes it, you yeah. know. Uh, yeah, we're all flowers different kind of flowers and we have to grow and we have to find out our environment to grow. We're all different. We're, the difference is from the inside and we have to learn what's inside us. People put shit in there that's not us and we try, try to be that and that's not right. That's why, you know, I act like an idiot because this is me inside, you know, and it took me a lot of failures uh, and but it's been satisfying at the end, and that's it. Life isn't easy, it's hard as hell, you know, and that's why you have to dig within yourself, take the information from the outside, and keep digging and keep trying. There's no alternative. If you think there's an alternative, let me know. The alternative is doing nothing. <laughs> and that's not worth it, man, that's no fun. You wanna have fun in life. You're not gonna be here again. Remember, you won't be here again. <laughs> so start having fun. And I hope we could help. Let's go help.com.